guys, my name is Antonio Nathaniel. Yeah, and I welcome you back to another episode of um of Fulham Mathematics for SS1 and SS1, which is secondary school one. So in this um first um episode, we're going to be talking about swords. So swords, swords they are very important um aspect of further mathematics because sword helps us to think beyond what we actually know in mathematics so sword is kind of like an extension of reality in mathematics it's kind of like virtuality or abstract stuff you guys so the reason what i'm trying to say is that in mathematics we deal with numbers numbers like one two three four five six but then when we go to swords we we, we talk about roots square roots cube roots and so on and so forth so there are special kind of co- of swords where we talk about square roots and that is what we're talking about today those are quadratic swords so um this is our, our our what we're supposed to achieve today. So we're supposed to um talk about the definition of sword, the rules of swords, the manipulating sword, the rules of sword, manipulating sword, and the rationalizing of sword. How to rationalize the denominators of sword. So um as we go into those stuff, I hope you um enjoy this course. So let's move on to the um concepts. So now the um concept to be dealing with here is um we we'll start from the concept of swords. So when we talk about swords, sword is basically a, um, a a kind of number that is cannot be rationally expressed so basically when we talk about sort there are no rational numbers literally so it, certain numbers certain numbers can be expressed as a ratio of two integers so when you can express a number as a ratio of other numbers or any time you can express a number as a fraction it is not a sword but if it cannot be if it cannot be expressed as, as a fraction then it is a sword so for example, 2 over 5, 3 over 5, 4 over 9, 2 over 12, 13 over 14, and so on and so forth, they are, they are all um, rational numbers, so they are not sold. But anytime a number is not rational, then it's just a possibility that it is a sword. Great. So now let's talk about um, the rules of swords. So the rules of sword hold that um, there are the things that um, determine what um, kind of behaviors that are expressed by swords. For example, we have the... Um, root 9 times root 16, that's 3 times 4. So you evaluate them separately. So root 9 is 3, root 16 is 4. So 3 times 4 is 12. So that's basically how it goes. So this, in general, when you have um, a sword, the sword of, um, the square root of two numbers is equal to the um, product of their, of their square roots. So basically, you have root A times B equals root A times root B. So that's, that's what I call the separation law. So basically, it's used to separate. And also, we also have division law. Separation of multiplication, we have separation of division. So, separation of division, like roots 1 for 12 or 9, that is root 16. So, that is one way we can actually express those um, sorts. So, as I was talking about the um, the division rule, we have the division rule. So, let's talk about it. So, the division rule has to do with the fact that you can see, you can express them, um, you can separate a quotient of two sorts. So for example, root 1 for 4 over 9 equals root 1 for 4 over root 9. That's called, the, I call it the um, separation of divisions. So and then you also have other rules too. But these are examples. So for this example, you can see that root 3 times 11 is equal to root 3 times root 11. And also root 5 times root 6 is equal to root 5 times 6. That's equal to root 30. So now that leads us to something very, very important in sort. So there's one very important um, component of sort, which you call um, basic sort. So basically, when we talk about basic sort, a basic sort is a kind of sort that um, has been reduced to the lowest possible form. So when we reduce a sort to the lowest possible form, we, we, are, we are expressing it in a way that it can no longer be reduced again. So what, in that case, what we're trying to talk about is the basic form of the sort, right? So um, so far, there are some examples we have on the screen here. We have um, So basically, if the rational number under the square root sign contains a factor, which is the square of a number, so... And the sort then can be reduced to um, a simpler form. And such a simpler form is called its basic form. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, in this basic form, we have three examples here. For example, one, we have um, root 162. If we, if we break it down into two, um, even into a multiplication of two numbers, for example, you break it down into it's 1 times 2. That's 162 is equal to it's 1 times 2, right? So if we break it down, we have um, that's root it's 1 times 2. That will be root it's 1 times root 2. We separate the um, multiplication. Then we we'll have um, the square of it's 1 is 9. So that will be 9 times root 2. That will be 9 root 2. So this is what basic sort means. It basically means you are cutting them down to the simpler form and you are evaluating from there. So that same for number 2, root 54, we, we separate them and then we um, break it down to its basic form. I hope you understand the concept of basic forms. So um, let's move on to another concept which is called um, similar sorts. So I want to talk about similar sorts. 
Similar sword has to do with the um, swords, which are multiples of the same um, same sword. Okay, basically, yes. So I call that the root sword, basically. For example, if you say 5 root 2, 6 root 2, 10 root 2, 12 root 2, and so on and so forth. No, all of them, they are multiples of the same root 2. So anytime you have a multiple of the same sword, they are called um, similar swords. For example, in this example, we have 2 root 2, 3 root 2, 7 root 2. It does not matter what the um, coefficient is. As long as the coefficient is multiplying a, a, the same square root of different um, sordical um, expressions. So they are all similar swords in that case. So that's similar sorts. You can actually add similar sorts. For example, you can say 5 root 2 plus 6 root 2, 11 root 2. 1 root 2 plus 1 root 2, 2 root 2. 2 root 2 plus 2 root 2, 4 root 2. Sure, you understand that concept, right? So um, let's move on to something else. So the next thing we're dealing with now is um, conjugate sorts. So conjugate sorts is, um, has to do with the fact that um, we can cancel sort out. So without the assistance of conjugate sort, it will be impossible for us to cancel sort out. It will be impossible for us to evaluate some um, rational expressions from sort. So, for example, we have two sorts are said to be conjugate of each other. If their product gives rise to rational numbers, from our knowledge of difference of two squares, we know that um, a plus b times a minus b equals a squared minus b squared. Right? So that is the same way we can rationalize the sort. So the conjugate of the sort is basically the same sort but with a an opposite sign so um i guess i should give an example here so um what we'll about conjugate sort conjugate sort has to do with for example what if we have a sort sort of root 2 the conjugate of root 2 is the number you multiply by root 2 to make it rational so and basically you'll be thinking of removing the square root so that means you need to square it right so what number can we use to square it you will use root 2 to square it that's times root 2 so root 2 times root 2 we square it and that will be give us 2 so it's not rational. It's not a rational number. So that is basically it. Any number that you can multiply with a sort to make it rational is called the conjugate of that sort. You are saying, right? So for example, it's not only limited to a um, single um, expression, single um, term. So for example, when we have double terms, let's say root two minus root three. Now this is this has two terms, root two and root three. But there will still be a number we can multiply by this. So in this case, if you are looking for the conjugate of this kind of sort, you reverse the sign. So the conjugate of root 2 minus root 3 is, you change that minus to plus, that will be root 2 plus root 3. Root 2 plus root 3. So in that case, this becomes the conjugate, and then we we'll begin to square it. So we we'll use difference of two squares. So the difference of two squares has to do with the fact that a, square minus, a minus b times a plus b is equal to a square minus b square. So in this case, let's compare that. a minus b times a plus b will give us a square minus b square, right? So you understand that concept. So basically, let's compute root two as a and root three as b. So then that that means we'll have um, root now it's root two squared as root two squared because root two is a root two squared minus root three squared. So this is the conversion format. So this is format by which you write this kind of stuff. And then we have root two squared is two minus root three squared is three. That's two minus three. That's um, that gives us minus one. So this is the um this is what will help you understand the concept of conjugate sort. So I hope you understand that concept. So let's move on to um something else. So um as as in that that conjugate sort, a lot of it's it's I can say like a lot like ninety percent of questions you come across in sort will involve conjugates in one form or the other. If you are trying to rationalize sort, you will make use of conjugates. So conjugates of sort is a very important concept which you need to master. So and then that brings us to the next concept, which is rationalizing the, the, the denominator. So um, when we are trying to rationalize the denominator of a sort, basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to um, let's say consider the sort three over two, an exact rational number is being divided by an inexact rational number. So the division process can be can be very unwieldy. So for example, if you are dividing a rational number by an irrational number, so basically you are you are likely to encounter an, a very um, unwieldy process, in, in, in which case it is quite, it's quite um, it's, it will not be very, very easy for you to take control of that sort of stuff. So in that case, all you need to do is you need to rationalize the denominator. And how do you rationalize the denominator? All you need to do is you multiply the denominator by its conjugate. So, and you also multiply the denominator by its conjugate. So in this case, for example, if we will have a sort like root 3 over 2, it is, it is, um, it is an inexact rational, irrational number being divided by an exact rational number. So the result will still be rational, sure. But in this case, if we have something like 
We will tell you why. So, so in this case, we have to rationalize it because once the denominator is solved, it is becomes so we, we cannot calculate it. So in that case, we have to rationalize it. So we will multiply the denominator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. So basically, we have three over two. In this case, as in this example I gave on the board, we have um, our conjugate is um, root two, right? So that means we have to rationalize. We have to um, multiply by root two. So that's multiply the denominator and the numerator by root two. That's three over two times root two over two. So if you notice that thing carefully, you will notice that the effect of multiplying is it has no effect because root two over root three, root two is one, and one has no effect on any number. So basically, we we'll still get our answer. Our answer will now be three root two over two, and it will still be equivalent to our original question. So that's the same thing. You can see the general format of rationalization. So that is how generally how to rationalize. So I hope if you come across any questions with your knowledge of conjugate and rationalization, you should be able to. Um, deal with those questions squarely. So I believe. So let's move on to the next concept in this video. Obviously, we are trying to go through things quickly. I don't want to waste too much time. So let's talk about equality of sorts. Um, equality of sorts. Basically, when we are given to sort p plus root m and q plus root n, what condition will satisfy if the sort p plus root m is to be equal to q plus root n? So basically, suppose suppose p plus root m. It equals q plus root n. Then p minus q equals root n minus root m. So in this concept, we're already talking about the fact that what conditions are to be satisfied if two sort are to be equal. So basically, the conditions are that n will have to be equal to m and p has to be equal to q. That's simply the condition. So this equality, it might look very simple, but it's actually very very um, it's applied in a lot of in a lot of cases. It's applied in um, in the square root of sort. So the concept of equality, we are going to take this concept of equality of sort and we are going to use it to calculate the um, square root of the sort. So let's move on to something like that. So basically we are moving on to this question. So um, so let's move on to here. So we have um, the square root of, um, let the square root of 7 plus 2 root 10 be root n plus root n. Then if the square root of a number is another number, then when you square the square root, you are going to get the original number, right? That means if you square root, if you square the, um, we will square um, the expression root m plus root n, which we are doing here, we will get the original number. So when you work it out, you expand it, you will get m n equals 10 as equation equation 2. Then when you also have equation 1, m plus n equals 7. When you evaluate it and use up kind of um, just check the questions, check the solution out. When you evaluate it, those are the steps on the screen. Check it and evaluate it. Then you at the end of the day you have the square root of 7 plus 2 root 10 r. Self root 5 plus root 2 it occurs twice so the um, square root of a of a sword is always possible to to um it's often possible to calculate the square of a sword but in most cases you might get an extraneous root so that is a kind of root that is not applicable in such question then you avoid such roots and then you move on with your question so i hope you understand that concept so um that was the concept for this video let's move on to um something else Equations in rational forms. So, um, what about equations in rational forms? We're talking about um, equations that are not rational. So, equations that they are quite um, they are not in a in a normal form. They are called radical equations anyway. So, basically, we have this kind of equations as you can see. In this section, we consider equations as a single variable and in irrational form. So, for example, how do you find the solution of two root three x plus four plus x equals to six? So, in this kind of case. Let me let you know that anytime you are dealing with um, 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 irrational equations, the first thing you need to do is you need to learn how to um, you need to learn how to square. So always square, always find the square of both sides. So in this case, that's simply what we do: square both sides. You can see the steps. So, but first of all, you have to isolate the terms containing the radical. That is, the terms having the roots will be on one side. In this case, we are on the left hand side. Then you move the other terms to the right, and then you um, evaluate the expression. That's that's general solution for something like this. So uh, moving on to something else. So um, actually, I, I assume that you guys have been enjoying this class. If you have, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. So let's move on to the exercises. So these are the exercises on the screen. Um, you can try them out at your leisure time, or you can try them out after completing this video. You can you can send your comments into the um comment section of this video or your complaints or anything you notice about this video let me know in the comment section so those are the you can try rationalizing this so don't forget the concepts i talked about rationalizing how to rationalize the, the denominators of sorts is basically by multiplying 
the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate. So this that's a simple question I'm giving you here. So you can try those out. So let's move on to something else. So that will be the summary of this concept. So in this video, we've talked about a, um, a lot of concepts. At least we talk about a lot of concepts. So um, we'll talk about um, um, we'll talk about the multiplication of 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 um, sorts. So for example, when we have this root a times root b, that is root a, root a times root b. So we have root a over b is equal to root a over root b. So that's separation of of um, sorts. So and then we also have um, the conjugate of sorts, which is gotten by changing the sign of the sort. Then we also have the conditions for equality of sort, which we talked about at some at some sufficient length. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've enjoyed this video, I hope to see you next episode. Thanks for watching.